Hi, my name is Roger and welcome to the channel. Today I want to talk about gear. I'm planning to once a month do an episode about some iconic gear we use in the music industry, either for live use or in the studio. And I want to start with one of the most iconic items there is, the famous Shure SM57. So let's talk about it. This microphone we all have heard a million times or more, both from recordings and from stage. And the applications you can use this microphone on are nearly endless. The SM stands for Studio Microphone and was intended for recording acoustic classical music. The engineer behind the SM57, Emmy Sealer, if I pronounce that correctly, despised rock music. So it's a little bit ironic that its main use now is for rock and pop music. The origins of this microphone we can trace back to the 1930s and in the 1950s Shure came with their Unidyne microphone which is the predecessor of this SM57 that came in 1965 and haven't changed since then. The sound of this microphone is like a fist in the face. It hits you hard. It, it has a pretty even frequency response from about 40 Hertz to 15 kilohertz, except for a bump in the higher mids, four to seven K ish, which makes the source really stand out in your mix when using this microphone. The main use for this microphone might be snare drums. Because of the bump in the higher mids, you get that crack that makes the snare drum stand out in your mix. Snare drums and SM57s must be related somehow because they are like family. And they also know guitar amplifiers really well, especially in my opinion, Marshall amplifiers. They must have lived like neighbors or something. The placement of the SM57 could be a little bit tricky. Change it one or two centimeters, half an inch, and you get a different sound. That could be both beneficial and a curse. But the use for the SM57 doesn't end there. You can use it on other amplifiers like bass amplifiers, percussion like toms or congas really loves this microphone, horns, even acoustic guitar. Even though the membrane of an SM57, which is a dynamic microphone, is a little bit thicker than a condenser microphone, so you don't pick up the high frequency transients as much as with a condenser microphone. But if you want that Beatles, Crosby, Steel, Nash & Young sound from an acoustic guitar, you can definitely use an SM57. Madonna, Tom Waits, Tom Petty, Peter Gabriel are just a few of the vocalists that have used this microphone both in the studio and live. If you use this microphone as a vocal microphone, I would recommend a pop filter, either one of these or this foamy thing you can put on the microphone. I don't have one so I can show you. Unfortunately, the pen trick that I've showed you in a previous video won't work because it's so hard to put the pen on the microphone and also green tape doesn't really work with the SM57. Let me tell you where you can use this microphone. I rephrase that. Let me tell you where you can't use this microphone. You can't use it on... on I think you can use it anywhere, even as a hammer. Or a bottle opener. Or dumbbells, maybe for children or cats. Or rolling pin for small doughs, my favorite is dumplings. And it's nearly indestructible. It's very, very robust. If you've had one of these that have been broken, you should have called the news agency in your country, like CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera, whatever, because that would have made the headlines. And if you've had one of these that have been broken, please leave that in the comments and tell us how and why, and because that is rare. So what are the pros and cons of this microphone? On the plus side, I would say, first of all, that it's cheap. I don't know what the cost is in your country, but let's say $100. $100 for a professional microphone isn't that bad. 
Secondly, it's nearly indestructible. And it works on nearly everything, at least close miking, then it works on everything. Because of the raised high mids in this microphone, it also makes your sound stand out in your mix. Also, it has some proximity effect. The bass bump you get when you get close to the microphone, and that you can use to your advantage if you want a bigger, fuller vocal sound with a lot of bottom end or bass amplifier or drums. It is also small and easy to set up. Are there any cons? Well, yes. On the minus side, I would say that it's sensitive for placement. Change the placement just a tiny little bit and you get a different sound. This microphone has a cardioid pattern which means that the microphone takes up sound mostly from the front. But that isn't a bad thing, but the sound that leaks in from the side of the microphone isn't always the prettiest sound. Listen when you have mic'd a snare drum, how the hi-hat leakage into the microphone sounds. It's not always the prettiest. Because of the bump in the higher mids, it can also be a rather harsh microphone. And that isn't suitable for all applications. I wouldn't use this close micing a violin, for example. I told you that the proximity of this microphone could be to your advantage, but it can also be negative. You can also get low rumble from a guitar amplifier, for example. Maybe it's not the best microphone when you're micing at a distance. I wouldn't use this mic in a choir or a symphonic orchestra, but I have used it as room mic for drums. I place it 5 meters, 15 feet away from the drums, maybe on the floor, compress it and then blend that in together with other room mics. Because the membrane is a little bit thicker than condenser microphone, it doesn't pick up the cymbals as much, so you get more of the drums and less of the cymbals. So you can use that lack of information that the microphone have to your advantage. So that's both a plus and a minus, I guess. So what are your thoughts about the SM57? Do you like it? Do you think that it's the best thing since sliced bread? Or do you think like the famous producer and engineer Steve Albini that doesn't even consider this as a microphone? Please tell me in the comments. And uh, I'm gonna end with a challenge for you. Indestructible in Swedish is oförstörbar. Oförstörbar. <laughs> Until next time, Roger that.